Pato Continuous Delivery allows teams of any size to increase the speed of their releases in both a responsible and sustainable way. Take this simple pipeline as an example. Let's assume that I'm a developer or admin working in the Dev1 sandbox. Given my company's release flow, a deployment must be kicked off manually from my sandbox to the integration environment, and then again to deploy up to staging, and once more to release that work into production. Then the other members of my team would be responsible for back deploying my changes to their own dev boxes, in this case just Dev2, not to mention the various types of testing that need to take place at each stage of the process. But Capato Continuous Delivery allows companies to automate each part of this process. To set up or adjust the CI CD, I can select Configure Pipeline in the top right. Now here in blue, I can see the pipeline connection behaviors. Looking at integration, the forward arrow in the infinity symbol mean that all user stories that are deployed to integration will be automatically deployed up to the staging environment as long as the appropriate quality gates are run and passed. And that is what the shield signifies. The backwards arrow and the clock mean that work will be back deployed on a predefined schedule. Now I'll click in to view this connection and its behaviors. Here you can see how to determine the automation level for deployments moving forwards, backwards, and at the bottom here are the list of quality gates that will be run. So the first one will be Apex tests to verify the proper code coverage. Then a pull request to receive approval from a peer or a manager. And finally, Selenium tests to make sure that there weren't any regressions from the changes that were introduced. Now if any of these tests fail or do not meet the specified quality threshold that you set up, you'll receive an alert and that deployment will be paused until the quality is increased. The great thing about these quality gates is that you have the freedom to determine which metadata types each gate should apply to. For example, looking farther right now, you can see that the Apex tests will only run against a user story that has classes or triggers in it. The pull requests will only be enforced on configuration and the Selenium tests on a custom metadata grouping that we've deemed affects the user interface. And these behaviors can differ for each individual connection. Dev2 is currently configured for all deployments to be manually triggered. Let's go ahead and update that to match what I already have in place for the Dev1 environment. So I'll click in and set forward deployments to be automated. And then the back deployments to be on a schedule. And let's define that schedule as well. We'll have this org get automatically updated every weekday at 5 a.m. And there are already the necessary quality gates in place at the bottom, so I won't change anything there. But to come back to the significance of these metadata groups, I have the ability to create what we call metadata fast in slow lanes. Some components are more prone to mistakes or have a higher likelihood of affecting other parts of Salesforce negatively. These need to be tested more comprehensively. But components, maybe such as reports and dashboards, if there are ever changes made to those metadata types, you're fine with having fewer tests or even no tests so that changes made in a dev box can rapidly make their way up to being used in production. This feature offers you exactly that flexibility. Now, what does this look like in practice? Let's go through deploying a user story with only reports and dashboards in it. So here I have my story and I've just finished committing the work that was assigned to me. To indicate that my work has been completed, I'll use the submit button in the top right. Now this screen is asking me to confirm, as well as presenting me with an overview of what will take place after I submit. This story has no dependencies with any other user stories. The connection behavior dictates that this will be auto-deployed up to integration. And although I do have quality gates set at this level, none of them will run 
as they don't apply to a user story with only reports and dashboards in it. So I'll click Submit, and then we can head back to the Pipeline Manager, which serves as the traffic control center to see which metadata is moving where. I can now see that the deployment is taking place up to integration. And after that deployment completes, another one will kick off, moving this work to staging. That deployment finishes up, and now the story is in transit to the production environment. So in a matter of minutes, the changes moved through my entire pipeline, and for more complicated metadata types, the necessary tests would have been automatically run along the way. This empowers you to increase the velocity of your releases while never jeopardizing the stability of your Salesforce environments. Now we still have the back deployment that needs to take place to the Dev2 environment. So come tomorrow at 5 a.m., that will get kicked off just like this. And now Dev2 has been updated with all the latest changes.